Benny Hinn is coming to Toronto. We invite you to join him to hear the life-changing Word of God, experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in worship, and witness Jesus' miraculous healing power. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus is good, and He's healed me. Your life will be impacted at the Prayer Palace Church on Friday, September 7th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, September 8th at 10 and 7. Call or go online for more information. He'll see you there. Precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. I'm so glad we're back together because I want to show you from the Word of God what God's Word has to say about healing you. Faith is so important to miracles. And as I minister the Word, I pray your faith will come alive that you will begin to believe God, maybe for the first time in a long time, that healing and miracle is really going to happen this time. Because you know, we are faced with so many negatives out there. Well, let's get rid of the negatives. Let's focus on the Word of God and see what God has to say, the highest authority in heaven and earth has to say about miracles. Healing is for today. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, we come, we ask you, Lord, to touch our hearts, touch our minds, give us clarity and thought, and let us see your word crystal clear with no distraction and no fog. In the mighty name of Jesus and God's people said, Amen. I have been in the healing ministry now since 1974. I've seen a lot of miracles, and I've seen a lot of sickness, and I've seen why people sometimes do not get healed. There are obstacles to healings. One of them is when people get all wrapped up in themselves, and they beg for that miracle. God cannot get through that because they're so tense. So miracles demand peace. Just relax. Just believe God's blessed, simple word. When it comes to spiritual things, let's not complicate it. It's so simple. Let's not walk away from the simplicity of the word of God, the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the simplicity of what he told us. And the commandments of God, it says, are not difficult. So, yesterday, I talked about a few things I want to repeat, and then I want to keep going from, from there on what the Bible has to say about miracles. Well, first of all, healing is very easy. Healing is so simple. It's as simple as forgiveness. When you believe God for forgiveness, that's simple. It's just as simple. To believe in healing. Now, when you look at the Bible, you see that it's God's will to do good. Jesus went about doing good, it says in Acts 10, 38. Doing good means everything good comes from the Lord, and sickness is not good. So let's not call disease and tragedies and all the trouble out there, earthquakes and famines and this and that, as the acts of God. They're not the acts of God. They are the acts of the enemy. Because remember that God gave Adam the dominion and the authority, and Adam lost it and gave it to the enemy, Satan. And Satan said in Luke to the Lord, he said, it's all mine now. And the Lord didn't argue with that. One of these days, Jesus will come and take it all back, of course. But still, the enemy, Satan, is still the prince and part of the air. And what happens out there is his acts, not the Lord's acts. So God does good. All good gifts come from the Lord, it says in James. So Jesus went about doing good, not 
causing storms, calming storms. And he does not discipline us as his children by causing sickness to touch us. That's not in the Bible. I have four children. I will not uh, break their legs when I discipline them. I will not hurt them physically when I discipline. The word train means educate. Chastise means educate. So you train a child by educating them. You, uh, so when, when the Bible says chastise, God doesn't chastise you by breaking something or giving you disease. It's by educating us, helping us grow up. So God's word is full of good. And when you see Jesus, you see God himself. Because everything he did is God's doing. So if you want to know what the Lord is like, look at Jesus. He is the work of God. He is the will of God in action. So it doesn't have to say it. If Jesus did it, it's God's will. When he forgave that woman who was caught in the very act, it was God's will to forgive. When he cleansed the lepers, that's God's will to cleanse lepers. When he raised the dead, then it's God's will. Everything Jesus did is God's will in action. Now, people sometimes use what happened to Paul the Apostle as, you know, well, God allowed the thorn in the flesh. The thorn in the flesh must be a disease because Paul said, I'll gladly give you my eyes and so forth. And so on. No, no, no. It wasn't a, an eye disease that he had. The Bible tells us very clearly what happened. So let's talk about that. 2 Corinthians 12. Because, see, people use all kinds of things to try and show that Sickness is from God. Troubles are acts of God. All the problems out there are acts of God. No, 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 no. He comes to do good. Jesus went about doing good. And all that Jesus did is the acts of God. So, now why did Paul have a thorn in the flesh? Well, he tells us why. It says in verse 7 of 2 Corinthians 12, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So we know that the messenger was a demon spirit who came to harass him, who came to buffet him. It says nothing about sickness touching him. So let's lay all this aside that sickness is not God's will. Health is God's will. I wish above all things that you be in health, it says in the Bible. Health, that's God's will for you. Now, let's talk about something that's really important. Healing is God's provision. Um, in Exodus 15, 26, the Lord said very clearly, and by the way, the next few days I'll be teaching on healing in the atonement, and I don't want you to miss it because it's really, really powerful. Because I think when we see the cross, we're going to see miracles. Queen Helena, the mother of Constantine, when she went to Jerusalem, she was looking for the holy sites. And when she went to Golgotha, it took a long time for her to even find Golgotha. Finally, she found uh, three crosses buried by a lot of garbage. This is what history says. And she did not know which cross was the real cross. And uh, she brought the sick and laid the this, this, this sick on the, on the ground. And she had her people lay one of the crosses on the sick, nothing happened. She laid the second cross, nothing happened. But the third cross, all were healed. And she knew this is the, the real cross, what history says. And she, that's how she found Mount Golgotha. There is healing in the atonement people. Um, my father-in-law, Roy Hardin, was dying with cancer. His kidneys had shut down, no hope. My wife and I were, uh, went to Orlando, where they lived, to say goodbye for the last time. And uh, Roy was uh, skin and bones. He was white, he lost his hair, chemotherapy. It was just a terrible thing to look at him. And a man of God came with us who began teaching Roy about the power of communion. I have never heard such a powerful message in all my life as I heard that man teach on communion. 
Then he looked at me and said, go find some grape juice and find some bread. And I went and brought what he had asked for, for the elements. And uh, told Roy Harden to begin taking communion and remind the Lord what he did on the cross. And Roy did it. And believe it or not, that cancer was gone within weeks. His kidneys began to work. The color came back on his face. He lived an additional 10 years, all because he began to take communion daily and to remember the work of Golgotha. More healings take place today in Catholic churches than Pentecostal churches for one reason. They revere communion. They revere communion. The church of Satan, they say, mocks only one communion, the Catholic communion. How, how, how interesting that Satan mocks and his people mock one communion, the Catholic. Why? Because they revere the body. They revere the blood. They don't take it lightly. So the Bible doesn't say, this think in remembrance of me. It says, this do in remembrance of me. So we have to reenact the work of Calvary. And may I also add, Jesus did not say, this is symbolic of my body when he gave that bread. He said, this is my body. He didn't say, this is symbolic of my blood. He said, this is my blood. So in spirit, in spirit, it's the real body. In spirit, it's the real blood of Jesus. And I think that's where we missed it. I'll be teaching on that. Don't you miss it the next few days. Healing is in the atonement. I remember meeting with Cardinal Sin in the Philippines. Imagine such a name, my Cardinal Sin. When I was in Manila, the newspaper said, Sin meets with him. <laughs> but anyways, but when I talked to that Cardinal, he was telling me about the miracles that were taking place in the Philippines. I was amazed. He said how he wrote a letter to the Pope to tell him about this lady who was completely crippled and paralyzed and healed as she took communion. Wow, it just amazed me. I remember a man in, the, in England in 1981 who came to my service every day for two weeks, wrapped with a brace from the neck down. I'll never forget that guy sitting on the front row. And nothing happened to that man for two weeks. And then on a Sunday morning, with my mother-in-law, Pauline, serving communion, he was healed, like, just like that, during communion. And he walked into the service that Sunday night, carrying his metal braces. Oh, the place just, <laughs> the people began shouting. I saw it with my own eyes, the power of the atonement. Healing that man who sat there for two weeks and listened to me. But communion did it. So we'll talk about that later, but I do want to say quickly, in Exodus 15, because sometimes I think people miss the fact that what did God show Moses? But the cross. So when, when the people came to a place called Mara, it says they began to complain. And the people murmured against Moses and said, what shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, the cross which when he had cast into the waters, meaning people, the waters were made sweet or healed. And God said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, will do that which is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians. I am the Lord that healeth thee. God did not give that promise until the cross was revealed. Wow, the power of Calvary bringing the miraculous. So healing is God's provision. And we see that God is opposed to disease because when he healed his, his people, what was he saying? He was saying, I don't want disease in my people. Why would Jesus heal the sick? Because he hated disease. He did not want his people to be struck with disease. Jack Hayford sat one day when I was doing This Is Your Day with him and we were showing clips from the Crusades and he began to weep and he began to say, oh, look how he loves his people. Oh, look, Benny, look how he loves his people. 
that Jesus' love was healing his people. And it's true. For God to love the world, he sent his son to save you. For God to love the world, he sent his son to heal you. How do we get healed? Give him your disease, that's how. What do we do when we get saved? We give him our life. Well, how do we get healed then? Give him our, our body, our disease. Getting saved demands you give him your heart. Getting healed demands you give him your body. He, he, he will only fix what you give him. He will not fix what you keep. He only will fix what you let him have. So let him have your disease. Don't be embarrassed to give Jesus your sickness, to say, I give it to you, Lord. I don't want it. I can't deal with it. I don't know what to do with my cancer. I don't know what to do with my heart problem. I give you my heart problem. I give you my arthritis. I give you my cancer, Lord, take it. Now, you that are sick in body, you listen to me. With all the technology out there, with all the breakthroughs, there are more people sick today than a year ago. Look it up on the internet. There's a lot of disease out there. People are getting sick. Young people are getting cancers and tumors and this and that more than they were before. With all the breakthroughs, with all the medicine, we need the healing message in the church again on how we need it now. So, it's God's provision. And God promised with long life, not short life, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So, now, let's understand that healing is in God's redemptive plan. In Matthew 9, 6, Jesus said to the man, remember the man that they lowered through the roof? He said, your sin is forgiven. Arise and walk. In the same breath, your sin is forgiven. Now stand up and walk. So he gave it together. It's the front of the cross and the back of the cross. The front of the cross is salvation. The back of the cross is healing. Because with the stripes, we are healed. Now, we are a combination of heaven and earth. We're a combination of spirit and flesh. So salvation, we are a twofold nature. So salvation uh, is for my spirit and eventually my body. Healing is for my body. And David saw that when he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, don't forget his benefits, who forgives all iniquities and heals all disease. It's all together. Forgiveness and healing are twins. Um, fulfilled in Jesus. Completely preaching the gospel brought healing to the sick. So, Salvation and healing confirm that Jesus is Messiah. Remember uh, when John the Baptist sent his disciples and said, uh, are you the one or do we look for another? And what did Jesus say? He said, the gospel is preached and the sick are healed, meaning I'm the Messiah. Whenever people are forgiven and healed, it proves Jesus is Messiah. Whenever people are saved and healed, it proves Jesus as Messiah. We should not receive salvation and not healing at the same time. So healing is a part of salvation. The word sozo means total salvation. And total salvation is what? Physical healing too. Now why is it that people will accept salvation much faster than they accept healing? Well, because they know that Salvation is the only way to heaven. But healing, well, I can get healed by going to a doctor. I can get healed by taking medicine. There's other means that give me healing, but only one way I can get saved. Yet God promised both at the same time. And okay, you may get help from doctors. You may get help from medicine. But there's no blessings and no longevity with it. No health with it. No real joy with it. No praise 
will you praise God for it and your life is blessed by it. Everyone who is healed receives benefits spiritually in their life. Many people end up having a healing ministry themselves or begin to, they begin to believe for others to be healed and God uses them. I know a lot of people who were healed in my meetings who now pray for the sick and God is using them too. All right, so sin and sickness are as united as soul and body. Therefore, forgiveness and healing are as united to a soul and body. So the Bible makes it clear Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, sin and disease. Now, um, I want to say something here. He was wounded for our transgressions, Isaiah 53, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace. Wounded in spirit, crushed in his soul, chastised in his body. Why? Wounded for transgressions, that's the heart of sin. Iniquities is the act of sin. And then we have the curse of sin. He was chastised to give me peace so the curse of sin would not touch your life or my life. And then forth with his stripes, we are healed. Jesus came to bring healing to the whole man, to spirit, to soul, and to body. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says something powerful, that through his name, salvation and healing comes. I want to pray right now in his name that God will heal every sickness. And then I'm going to pray with those who, are, who don't know the Lord. So stretch your hands towards me. I'm stretching mine towards you and I feel the anointing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, right now we come in faith believing that every sick body will be healed and I rebuke that disease in the name of Jesus. I command that sickness to be gone in the name of Jesus. I order that sickness to go in Jesus' name now. Heal your people. Heal everyone calling your name Jesus. Now if you need the Lord to save you, just say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul and my life. I surrender. Wash me now with your blood, wonderful Lord. Amen and amen. Wow, I'm feeling the anointing just talking right now, I'm praying with you. I also want to pray that God will bless your life now financially. Because you know when God brings salvation and healing, He also prospers. Remember, Acts 2, they were saved. Acts 3, they were healed. Acts 4, they prospered. In Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, they were saved. Acts 3, Peter and John walk up to the temple and that man is healed. In Acts 4, it says none lacked among them. They always come together. So Father, in Jesus' name, come on, believe God with me. That prosperity now will come to everyone watching. The Word of God says, I wish above all things you prosper and be in health. So Lord, we ask now for health, physically, health spiritually first, and health physically second, and Lord, health financially. I pray there'll be blessings, prosperity come in Jesus' name to everyone who obeys you now, in Jesus' name. And now remember, a spiritual miracle demands a spiritual act. What is a spiritual act? When you pray and say, Lord, come into my heart, which we just did. A physical miracle demands a physical act. Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. To the man he said, stretch your arm, your hand. So a financial miracle demands a financial act. That's when you give to the Lord's work. So by giving, God will prosper you. Do it today. There's an address on the screen. You send your donation there and your prayer request. Now that's a brand new 
post office box just for you. And uh, we have another one in Texas. Now this one is just for the program because I want all those prayer requests to come to me. So they go to Dallas and then they keep the money there, put it in the bank there. Then they send me the prayer requests here so I can pray over them. Because I want to pray, and this is my prayer room here in my home. I want to pray that God will heal you and set you free. I believe that with all of my heart. So do it today. You write to that address. And then the phone number is on the screen. You call now. And you sow that seed. And help me, by the way, plant trees in Israel. We're planting a lot of trees so you can go to our website for that. Benin.org. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine on you, give you peace and heal you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet and save your loved ones this year in Jesus' name. Amen, and I'll see you tomorrow. Benny Hinn is coming to Toronto. We invite you to join him to hear the life-changing Word of God, experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in worship, and witness Jesus' miraculous healing power. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus is good. Me. Your life will be impacted at the Prayer Palace Church on Friday, September 7th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, September 8th at 10 and 7. Call or go online for more information. He'll see you there. Pastor Benny Hinn's new School of Ministry Online is an exciting and powerful tool designed to help you to grow as a Christian, be enriched in your spiritual life, and strengthened for service. These online classes will enable you to study God's Word with Pastor Benny as your teacher, regardless of your location, time constraints, or educational level. Courses include Operating in the Anointing, How to Pray for the Sick, The Names and Nature of God, Jesus Revealed in the Tabernacle, Deliverance from Demons, the Foundations of the Doctrine of Scripture, God's Agenda for the Ages, a study on prophecy in the Book of Revelation, and many more with new courses being added on a regular basis. Using the latest technology, which will integrate seamlessly into your busy schedule, you'll have immediate access to amazing learning tools such as dozens of free ebooks, Pastor Benny's personal sermon notes, thousands of hours of digital content, including over 600 videos, an extensive resource library, virtual study groups and forums for sharing ideas with other students around the world, and so many other resources for efficient and effective learning. With Pastor Benny as your teacher, Teacher, you'll be thrilled at the way your knowledge of the scriptures and growth as a Christian will increase exponentially. Enroll in the Benny Hinn School of Ministry online today. Pastor Benny Hinn invites you to join over 3 million Facebook users around the world who like Benny Hinn Ministries. Don't miss this opportunity to receive inspiring messages, scriptures, teachings, announcements, and Pastor Benny's live teachings on Facebook. Like and follow Benny Hinn Ministries today.